This week at Interior, Secretary Bernhardt this week signed a proclamation designating the Alfred Daniel King Senior House in Ensley, Alabama to the African American Civil Rights Network. He was joined by members of the King family for the event to celebrate the occasion and to recognize A.D. King's advancement of civil rights as the leader of the Birmingham campaign. At a signing ceremony in the U.S. Capitol this week, Secretary Bernhardt and Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell formally established Mill Springs Battlefield National Monument in Nancy, Kentucky as the 421st unit of the National Park System. Mill Springs was the site of the first major victory for the Union Army during the Civil War. In Utah last week, the Secretary transferred ownership of the first federal water facilities under the new Dingle Act to local irrigation districts who have paid for, operated, and maintained these facilities. President Trump signed that law in 2019. Taxpayers will save money and the transfer paves the way for non-federal infrastructure investments. Secretary Bernhardt was joined by Agriculture Secretary Sonny Perdue and Fish and Wildlife Director Aurelia Skipwith at Fort Benning, Georgia to celebrate the proposed downlisting of the red cockaded woodpecker from endangered to threatened under the Endangered Species Act. Fort Benning and a dozen other military installations performed years of crucial conservation work to recover the woodpecker. Deputy Secretary Kate McGregor was joined by Director Skipwith in Arizona this week. They visited the Buenos Aires and Cabeza Prieta National Wildlife Refuges in support of the Trump administration's efforts to secure the southern border and highlight the largest expansion in history of hunting and fishing opportunities on public lands at 2.3 million acres this year. An Ohio art professor's idea to create paint pigment from acid mine drainage has already led to art, but it could also lead to more local jobs and cleaner water. More than a decade ago, John Sabraw saw the environmentally adverse effects of AMD on a local waterway, but was also inspired to use the iron oxides to create art using the pigments he created. And that inspired a collaboration between researchers and community organizers to create a water treatment plant. If successful, a regional environmental group hopes to spread similar facilities throughout Appalachia. After 50 years, two historic paintings are back home in Interior this week. The Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone and the Chasm of the Colorado by Thomas Moran are credited with firing up America's love affair with the West in the 1870s. They've been alone for half a century, most recently at the Smithsonian, but now they're back on display in the Interior Museum where Secretary Bernhardt says they belong. I have personally believed for many years that they should be returned to Maine Interior and displayed in the department that is so connected with their history. Through the Great American Outdoors Act, President Trump is preserving the places that Moran painted for future generations to enjoy. Visitors here will continue to be inspired by these great works and the natural landscapes that they represent. In honor of Public Lands Day, September 26th, all entrance fees that are normally charged will be waived at all national parks, wildlife refuges, and other public lands. Public Lands Day celebrates the connection between people and the great outdoors and encourages the use of open spaces for education, recreation, and health benefits. And our social media picture of the week comes from the night skies above Hawaii Volcanoes National Park on the Big Island of Hawaii, a spectacular view of the Milky Way complete with a moon bow, a rainbow produced by moonlight rather than direct sunlight. Make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. That's this week at Interior.